Hi, hello, it's me, Unkempt Snuggle Pepper, with another episode of Art Critiques from Reddit. There's a link down below in the doobly doo if you want to submit your art directly to me to be featured as a critique. You can also support the channel with Buy Me a Coffee, also linked down below. Okay, so this person posted this uh, drawing of Tobey Maguire, also Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. There's a few technical things I want to go over. One of them is when you use traditional medium and you're going to take a photo, the best way to do that is to be somewhere kind of in the sunlight. So if you can be next to a window where there's light coming in, that's going to give you brighter, closer to white paper in your photograph. It is very difficult to get a photograph of traditional art just with regular house lighting. It's just not bright enough. So on this one, I increased the brightness and the contrast a little bit. So we're a little closer to a white-ish paper. We're actually hitting kind of a mid-tone gray. So the first thing that struck me about this piece is the eyes. And what happens is rather than seeing the eyes in three quarters view, because there's the center of our face. I don't know why I chose this green. There's the, the center of our face as described by where the nose and the lips are. And so this eye is closest to us and this eye is furthest from us. And rather than having this eye wrap around the edge of the face, uh, it almost feels like you took the side of the face and morphed it so he's facing fully forward with us, which would be inaccurate. Uh, the eyes are also very wide. If you're going to make the stylistic choice to make larger eyes, they still need to be functional. They still need to have the spherical shape. They just will lack the, the, the wideness by itself because underneath the lid, the eye is essentially a sphere. And you may say, unkempt snuggle pepper, this is my style. This is what I do. <sighs> this is hard because I don't want to sound mean. I don't want to say, don't do this. Your style is wrong. But I think the style is holding you back from really learning anatomy. It is a crutch um, that is preventing you from being able to draw a face properly in three quarters. Learn the rules before we break the rules. Second, a note on style. Personally, I don't believe in going out and trying to develop a style. I know that I've drawn long enough that I can recognize one of my one of my art pieces regardless of if I'm trying to do realism or if I'm trying to do something more on the cartoon or semi-realistic side. Your style is going to happen because if you take a room full of people and we're all drawing the exact same thing from the exact same angle, how we make marks is going to differ from each one of us. So don't worry too much about style. Make sure the eyes are functioning if you choose to have a different style. I'm thinking that this wasn't a stylistic, intentional choice. It's just something that kind of happened and you went with it. So let's talk about what a three quarters view would look like. So I'm going to take these, move them around a little bit. So because we're in a three quarter view, we still want to think about the eyes being spheres. This is our inner corner. This is our outer corner. This is still a sphere. The face is going to come off more to the, the side and it's not quite three quarters enough that I think that we would see the shape of the eye in the far side. His, his cheek is a little bit more steady, so I would uh, really pay attention to those angles. And then back to the eyes. I'm going to try to focus on those. He he does have uh, uh, not quite the, the width or the size that you had there before. And because I smushed them inwards, 
now they appear like they're kind of bugging two different directions, which is not what you drew. That's because I have, I have moved things around. So the, the pupil of the eye is going to get shading from the upper lid. And then of course you have the pupil. Actually, let's zoom out. Okay. So you have the eye as a sphere. You have the iris and the pupil. There's our inner corner. The iris, which is the colorful, colorful part of the eye, and the pupil, which, which is the black in the center. Now, very rarely does the highlight hit right directly in the center. What, what's happening is when we see that highlight is that our eyes are constantly wet. And because of that, they're very shiny, especially in the lower lash, lash line. And also uh, in other parts of the eyes. So if we take our reference, we zoom in, we see that his highlight is not hitting directly in the center, or at least not directly in the center alone. So when we come back over here, right, we have the upper lid and the upper lash line. He has a bit of a crease going out. We have the inner corner of the eye and the lower, the lower lid, which is where we're also going to see the lash line. I wouldn't worry about the, well, the tear line, which is where we put makeup when we're wearing eyeliner. You can put it along that line. However, um, in this size of render, I would not worry about that. Just know that it's there and a lot of the water tends to collect there. So it's one of the brighter parts of the eye. We can see it in the reference that his lower lid, partially because it sticks out, partially because things around it are darker as they recede into the eye socket and partly because there is um, a fair amount of, of water and moisture there. So he has, he has rather small eyes in, in the shape, but kind of a, a, a larger, oop, don't want to zoom in. I want to make my brush bigger, a larger iris. And so we're going to get shadow in a few places in the eye. One is going to be right in this area. This is where we have the nose that is protruding out. We have the brow bone that is above it. And then this is the inner side of the eye socket. So this is usually going to get the most amount of shadow in our eye and you haven't started here but i don't think you quite go dark enough I, it also depends on the reference um in celebrity photos like this when they are walking they are either in sunlight where they have a lot of diffused light on their face or if it's a professional shot they're in a light that is most flattering which means there are fewer shadows and those fewer shadows are very subtle and it's hard to work from references like that that, that's one of the challenges with celebrities. And then it kind of lightens out. You were right in, I drew all over this. You were right in, uh, this does get a fair amount of highlight. This part of the brow bone gets some highlight, but he has fairly deep set eyes. So this is going to be about a, a fair amount darker. Since you made the eyes so wide, moving them in and bringing them down in size, we'll put our brow bone in the right place. But right now there's not a enough room right here for a sphere to fit inside the socket. We also have a bit of shadow here. Usually the highlight hits about there on the lid. And then it's a little going out. And then on the lower lids, let's see. Yeah, this, this line underneath on the lower lid uh, generally 
you want to kind of minimize that. You still want it to be there. You were you were right that there there's a line here because that's where the sphere sits. Um, but be careful not to make it too pronounced, or you will make your character either look older or more tired. Now let's talk about the actual eye. There is a bit of shadow right in here from the lid. And on the iris, even though he has blue eyes, he has quite a bit of shadow. So we're going to put shadow up on the top. Um, this outline that you have generally doesn't exist. You're only going to see the outline like that if you are very, very, very close to the eye. Generally, you can do a nice shadow. You'll have the pupil. With bluer eyes, it does get lighter. So the shadow for the iris is going to be up here on top because the lid is casting a shadow upon it. The brightest point of the eye is going to be uh, opposite. I once had this explained that if you have a bowl that has a bottom that has a lip and you flip it upside down, the iris is like the, the stand on the bottom of a bowl. And it's going to behave um, opposite of things around it because you have light coming from here. So this is in shadow. This is a cast shadow from the lid. And then where your light is going to be it's going to catch probably right in here and then this part and then you're also going to have that wetness that comes along here and makes some shine. And your eye is going to hit more like that. So that's the anatomy of the eye. How do we do it when it's three quarters? All right. So we're looking at his face. There's the center line. There's inner corner one, there's inner corner two. This eye is going to be further away from the nose, or at least appear as such. And this eye is going to move in closer to the nose. So where we have this nice sweeping shape of his eye, that's going to be compressed because we are seeing in a way a sort of foreshortening. His uh, pupil and iris are going to be a little compressed and the lower lash line is going to be compressed. Again, because it's for shortening. And then we turn, we're going to just see the edge of his face. And since your eye was in a way that we would see in front facing, the side of his face moved along with it. Now, in general, what I would do for the rest of the face, uh, I would start exploring some pencils uh, some art pencils and start using a 4B or a 6B and really get some more shadows in. Depending on the reference uh, will depend on whether you're able to see these shadows, but there are plane changes in the face. So right here through here are some planes and they're in shadow. Not much of shadow because again, he has a lot of light uh, on him, and I'm not sure if this is the reference you use, but these shadows in yours here through here need to continue to carry throughout the face. The ear lines up with the top of the brow and then the bottom of the nose, so his ear should be bigger. So this shadow right here that would also come in through here is his form shadow. A form shadow happens because we have light coming in this way. And so this is turned away from the light. We're not going to see, uh, it's not going to get the light like the rest of the face does. The, uh, you started with the form shadow on the nose right here and in here. 
you have some of the form shadow on on the lips but i think you can really push those shadows darker uh, however in the hair we need to be looking for highlights because even even people who have jet black hair have highlights in their hair so what i would have done is saved a bit of the white of the paper for right here and you can go in with a kneaded eraser and pick up a lot of this pencil and I would put the highlight there and that's also going to give your hair a bit more uh, form with these little guys remember that they're going to cast a shadow but also remember that the hair tends to move in pieces rather than individual strands the only time you would draw individual strands is if you're doing hyper realism which you're not quite there yet so think of the hair in larger shapes this can be seen more in women's hair we tend to have longer hair we tend to have more variation in hairstyle where it can be very easy to look at a, a men's haircut and want to draw um, every little hair because they have a, a shorter cut and it doesn't seem to piece together like longer hair does. I should say longer hair and shorter hair. I've had short hair as a woman and I've known guys who had plenty of, of long hair. So, and then these guys get a little bit of a shadow. He does have pretty fairly dark hair so I think you can really go um really push that with a darker pencil again we're following the form so this half this half of his head is going to get more shadow than the other half and then where the part is there we've we've I know it's a little fuzzy and very quickly done but we've added some more also one more thing I would pay attention in the references. He does have a little dimple in the bottom of his chin. So I would add not, not too much shadow. You don't want it to stand out too much, but a little bit more shadow there. That is my critique. If you have enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like or subscribing to my channel where, where I do. Uh, I've really enjoyed making these videos. If you wish to support me or the channel, there are links down in the doobly-doo to buy me a coffee or to submit your artwork. Until next time, farewell.